Hello, we're live. So we are here today for the discussion of the uh, Kingdom of Gods in the Inheritance Trilogy read-along. I'm joined today by my wonderful co-host, um, Shay of Shay with the Hobbies, the co-creator, Emma Ray of Emma Ray Repowered, Shomla of Miss Awesome Saucy, and Deidre of Shade Tree Reads. Um, if people want to go around and do... Don't really do we need to do introductions do people want to do introductions it's up to you really not it i do it but i thought it, i thought we were only doing it because you gave us intro questions right there is an intro <laughs> i got this? you i got you this is why you have co host this is why you have yeah so there is an intro question which is you have to form a new triad with two people from the inheritance trilogy who are you picking I feel like Yana's Yana's solid. I'm gonna keep Yana, and I kind of want to bring Lil in, but like she's stinky apparently. Like she smells like rotting meat. So maybe I'll just bring in Matting instead. And like Lil, she could be a very powerful god, like in her own right. <laughs> so I feel a type of way because you kind of low key stole mine because I was gonna ask two questions and one was like, can we bring anybody back? Because if we are, then it was definitely going to be Lil and Maddie. But then you started to speak your truth. And I was like, I really can't do funky people. So you're right. I won't be able to choose Lil because I got to be able to, like, be around you for a little bit of time. And so I, you know, I was like, priding myself. On, oh, I'm going to say an all-female female thing. But the truth is, I'm really like, it's me, not her dope and see if I'm being honest. So, like, there's that. Um, ditto. <laughs> then I started editing <laughs> what I was thinking, <laughs> but literally the same. I was thinking Madding, and I can't remember how to pronounce her name, but I think it was Z Zakarn. The like Zakarn, yeah, yeah. Zakarn was her. like my like back one. Oh. My, for real, I like her. I love her so much, and I would I want to know more about her. So yeah. Yeah, for, for me, uh, ditto what Shay said, uh, Nahadam. Can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, so obviously it's gonna be Nahadol, number one. Um, and I would say Sia too, because Sia's our baby, you know, he's a baby, he has to be there. And if, it, if not Sia, then Madding, because I, I like Madding a lot. I'm going to go way, way out of left field and say the one dump, I believe. Oh, he had a bunch yeah. of, like, kids and, like, a little whole, like, I would call it a treasure trove, but some people might call it junk of just stuff everywhere. There's definitely something useful in there, and he knows exactly where it is. And then to, like, kind of, like, book in what y'all said, Lil, so they could go together in the treasure trove and then you know maybe i could just get like a big pal like upwind or downwind from them so i don't really you know but we can live in harmony you know i know where i need to be y'all know where y'all need to be you can eat your we're, we're living in harmony i think it's we're good I just love how like we all had like fan favorites in the same room. Like I love how we all love Lil. I love how like Maddie was definitely on the table for most of us. Like I love it. I love it. Now that I think about it, I might swap out Madding for who was it? Nisano, the god of dreams. I just feel like I could use some good dreams. So like I think I want him on my side. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I while we're discussing, I Nimmer, she comes in handy. Like, what she do? Especially because like... you have like the stealth team. I feel like you got Nahadoth and Sia. I feel like right? Nimmer doesn't like Sia, but personality wise, I can see what's happening with your right. Your group. I'm just saying, y'all know me. I'm a real Judy's moving silence like lasagna type person. So I would need the the people who likes to creep and crawl. Like, we gonna have to do some work. And I need a little triad that would do that. And now I'm thinking, like, Nimmer, 
you know, maybe Nimmer ain't like a triad guy. Maybe she like that that awesome fourth wheel or something. I just feel like she need a place in there. That's fair. She could be like so, a lieutenant or something. Sorry, what did you say, Shamal? Does anyone hear what Shomo said? I kind of got caught up on my end. Um, I think that she could be like a lieutenant. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Um, a lot of people love Lil. We're not happy to hear that she smells. But guys, it's canon. It's not just me. It says it in the book that her breath stinks. Um, who else do people think? I mean, halitosis, got, don't we got thing for halitosis? Ain't that like medicine or something she could take? But if it's her nature, if it's her nature, if it's just breath, see, I was thinking it was body. And I'm like, you know, some people body just smell a little different. And like, you know, that's hard sometimes for someone. I'm one of those people that smells, smells are hard for me. So I love her, but, you know, I can love from a distance. G. Renee said matting. Alfreda said glee in him. Interesting. Um, what else do people say? Uh, HR Wash says, I would have picked Lil too, but I can't do smell. I wasn't planning to single handedly like ruin Lil's dreams of being in a triad. I'm sorry, Lil. And Latrice says, uh, she would have done uh, Yena and Nasana too. Yes, I forgot about the dreaming god. Nasana, is that what you said? I yeah. forgot about him. Yes, 100%. So, unfortunately, Shay can't do our glorious summaries for us this week. Yeah, but... nah, I got y'all to, like, the, like, first 12 chapters, and then after that, it's like, you know, I remember what happened, but, like, not explicitly, you know. I also need to just jump in and say that I have not finished it, but I'm fully prepared to be full, and that's okay. I got, like, an hour left, so just... I'm sorry. Okay, so we could try and do a summary as a group. Um, let's see. Let's put our heads together. We can probably get through the whole thing. So story starts out um, with Sia feeling lonely. Sia wants what the, the three have. They're all close. They're all buddy-buddy, and they feel like, it feels like they don't really need him. So he's kind of bored and he goes to Sky to start some shit, basically. He's just hoping that someone's going to get on his bad side and he can pull some pranks on him. And who does he find but Shahar and Dakarta Aramari? Not the originals. These two are twins and they're just named after very horrendous people. And Sia is, they're being bossy. They're like, tell us how to get <laughs> back to our rooms. We're lost. And Sia's not having it. So he tells Shahar that she has to either pick between killing her brother or saving herself. And Shahar picks punching, no, kicking Sia down the down a flight of steps. Um and so, she stabbed him too, right? So it was reversed. So was what reversed? happened was he told her she was going to be bad. So she kicked him down the stairs. And so then he was like, oh, okay. You you want to play games? So he like, come here, little pretty little boy. And he like grabbed the Carter. And then his hand, it, when he says his hand slipped to his neck, I was like, wait a minute. Slipped. Like, boy, that was like emotion. And so then it was like, choose between watching me kill your brother and she like, stabs him so I just wanted because that was funny and because he started crying laughing at them and I was crying laughing at him crying and laughing at these six year olds it was funny so Sia does all that and Shahar is like that wasn't a fair game you rigged the game and he's like ah, I kind of did and that's kind of against my nature that I was like making these kids do this thing so I have to make it up to them so it says I'll grant you a wish and they say we wish Wait, actually, they say, come back in a year, and we'll come up with a wish. Because <laughs> they were not trying to be hasty after what Sia just did. So he goes away for a year, he comes back, and they're like, we want you to be our friend. They're just like, we're kids, we think it'd be fun. And at first, Sia, like, almost flips out, and then he's like, no, I think it was made in good faith, so, like, we're going to slit our hands, and we're going to shake hands, and we're going to be blood siblings. They do that, and there's a gigantic explosion. And after the explosion clears, 
um, Sia has now started to age. He is about like 16 or something, about the same age as the twins. And he's losing his mortal, he's losing his divine abilities. Um, none of the three can really stop it. They think maybe a Tempest could handle it, but Nahadoth and Sia are both like, <laughs> if it's if the Tempest is the only one who can handle it, I guess it's curtains for me. <laughs> like, how happening. long? How long? Um, yeah. So then, uh, Sia was staying with Nahadoth, and Shahar accidentally summoned him to Sky. And he Sia finds out that like after that explosion was happened, um Deca was sent away to like Scrivener's school and because everyone was trying to blame him for it because he's like the darker twin, he's like less it is in sky. Him and Shahar basically get to canoodling. Um, it was a kind of all Shahar's idea. Like her mom was kind of behind the scenes. Like she wants to get into God's favor for a certain reason, and so she kind of like pushed the two of them together. Um, and that really upsets Sia, and he leaves. And all while this is going on, there's like the mask stuff in the background. The Armar being sent these masks that are like. As soon as they touch them, they like start to burn. I try to figure out what's going on with that. Um, so Seal leaves. He goes down to Shadow, and he's bothering some little kid in the uh, junkyard. He runs into him. Um, it kind of makes her life more difficult. He's like, "Okay, I owe her. Um, what can I do to make up to you that like I was making your life difficult?" And she says, "Money." And he's a godling <laughs> with a very specific nature. He's like, "I can't make money." doing any of the things I'm good at. What? Where can I go? And she said, oh, we're going to go to, was it the House of, what, the Arms of Night or something like that? So he goes there, and who does he see but good old Haddo. Haddo is still around. Haddo is, in fact, a godling, and he's going to live for a very long time, and Sia is not happy about that. Um, Haddo is going by Ahad now. He's no longer with the Aramari. He's... Uh, professed himself to be a follower of Nahados, and he runs basically a brothel of sorts um, for, I think it's for mortals who want to have sex with gods. And he's like, Sia, you can, I'll pay off your debt to him because you're like annoying and I just want her out of here, but you're going to be a spy for me and this like super secret group of gods, um, which is who is it? Nemer, Kidder, Lil, and some guy who does commerce. Um, and on one of the missions they send him on, he finds out that the masks are that were burning up the Armari are coming from Dar. Um, they sort of have like this tradition that has always been going on, but resistance to Armari has been growing in Dar. Like, Dar left the high, cons high Consortium. They're not paying tithes, anything like that. Um, and so they've been sending out these masks. But also, um, there's, like, another mask, a very powerful mask that's, like, almost like the Maelstrom that's not supposed to exist, but it does. Um, and while he's there, he runs into a godling who's been appearing in his dreams, whose name is Kal. He's a god of vengeance. Um, and he asked them to make the mask. Um, it basically would make whoever puts it on a god. So Sia so goes back, he reports that, and then it's announced eventually that Shahar is getting married. Um, and they're worried about people with the mask storming the wedding, so they set up like a security patrol. Um, one of the people who's on the council is Galishoth, who's Orishoth's daughter. Um, she and Sia are, like, keeping watch, and then all of a sudden, all these people with masks start, like, storming the wedding. At first, I think it's just one, and then they realize that there's, like, more and more and more. Um, and Deca shows up, and what happens then? Oh, Sia's kind of killed in the fight, but... Decca shows up and gets him. Decca has been 
putting sigils on his body to basically make himself a god. That's what he's been doing at Scrivener School. Um, and like him and Shahar are so panicked after what happens that him, Shahar, and Sia all touch again. And it's as if Sia was never killed. Like no one remembers it happening. No one has any evidence of it. Um, so yes, that happened. Um, there's some, what else happens next? Oh, um, Lady Ramath, um, who fun fact had slept with her brother to eventually birth, um, Shahar and Dekka and Haddo is their like great grandfather. Um, she decides that she wants to move the capital of Sky somewhere where it won't be as easy to attack. And to do this, she has pledged her loyalty to Yena. Yena sets them up with a castle over the old capital in um, near Marland that Nahado had sunk forever ago. She makes them a floating castle. They're hanging out there. Um, Sia is still upset with Shahar. Him and Dekka have sex. Um, Shahar sees it. They're like, ha ha, <laughs> we're angry at you. Keep at it. Um, and I'm trying to remember what happens next. Oh, and then they eventually get reports that there's been another mask attack on um, the original headquarters back in Sky, where their mother has stayed. Um, she kind of calls them to be like, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. But also, like, Usain Dar has showed up here declaring war, and, like, there's a bajillion people with these masks, like, scaling the world tree. Um, and while they're scaling, and, um, Shahar this time purposely grabs for Sia and Dekka to use their power to move the castle to Sky to do something. And so they're like, she's kind of wielding their like temporary divine power. And, but Kal shows up, he basically makes all the masks explode. And since all the masks are on the tree at this point, that topples the world tree. And there's like this huge, gigantic cataclysm after um dar temporarily calls a truce because that wasn't supposed to happen that wasn't in their plans but after call did that the maelstrom appears in the sky and it's just getting closer and closer eating up more and more of the sky and so yena nahadoth and a tempest are like okay what are we going to do about this um at one point a tempest tries to put sia back to normal and he can't do it either. He says there's nothing wrong with him. This is just how he's supposed to be right now. And no one can figure out why. Um, the maelstrom's getting closer and closer. And Yena, Nahadoth, and the Tempest decide sort of make a plan. Um, basically, their plan is that a Tempest is going to put on the mask. And it's going to like erase his previous identity. But he will remain as, retain his place in the three and just be like a completely different person. Um, in the scuffle, that doesn't work out quite as planned. Um, what happens? I forget why it doesn't work out, but eventually Sia decides that he is going to go up and trick Call. So, like, it's a big, giant, awesome fight. Glee gets the sword from her papa. It's, like, magical. Um, she's almost a god for, like, a, however long that fight goes on. Um, Sia has Dekka fly him up. He convinces... Oh, Cal is Sia's son. He is the son of him and Anefa. Anefa made Sia forget about it because having a son would kill him because it's against his nature. Um, and she kind of had Cal, like, separated from everyone in this, like, separate, like, dimension. And after she died and Yena replaced her, her power over Sia um, decreased and Call escaped. And so Call for Call's thing is vengeance, and so he wants to kill Sia. And so Sia says, Okay, come kill me. Um, a Tempest had Glee had given a Tempest a knife with her blood on it um, to kill himself if he ever so chose. And Sia has the knife, he stabs Call, takes the mask, puts it on himself. Um, and then stabs himself. He basically absorbs the maelstrom and solves everything. Um, he's been telling the story up to this point, and then Shahar becomes a narrator. Um, and she's very sad for a very long time.
long time. She dies at 70 when she dies. Um, her Deca, who had died in the fight, and Sia become the central triad for another universe, um, which no one else is basically aware of. Um, I think when the story ends, Yena had known that Sia was becoming a god somehow, and she was sad that even if he had lived, she would never get to see it. But she doesn't know that he's off doing his thing with Shahar and Deka. So that was all I remember. Was there any major plot points or facts I missed? Oh, Glee and Ahad are a couple. I can't hear you, Emma Ray. I don't know why. Sorry, sorry. I had some stuff going on with the computer. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I was just going to say that. And then uh, Ahad also learned what his nature was. And it was love, I think. Yes, 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 it was. Yeah. And then by the Glee's, end. Glee's going down. And he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> he's prince to see. So sad. I was like, oh, God. But then also uh, by this time, like while this big fight is happening, Sia's like 80 years old. Yeah. He's very old, pastor, very old pastor. man. Yeah. Every time, basically, he sees Call and is reminded that he has a son, he ages mm -hmm. more and more and more. Mm -hmm. HR Wash said the initial plan doesn't work because they found out that Call can throw hands with the gods. Yeah, like Yena was like, death is reality everywhere. Like, bring it on. I'm going to get you. And she tries her thing. It doesn't work. So she goes up there and she's fighting him. Then Glee's up there and she's fighting him. I think Nahato's got in the mix at one point. And Call was just like, <laughs> light work <laughs> i'm gonna be a god in no time i feel like nobody thought about the fact that he's been planning for this for a century for like millennia like for a very long time like before Enifa died and there were like thousands a year that they were in control like by the air mary even in that point so like there was a lot of thought that went into this right because he had a lot of time to just do and so like knowing that like um, and if his hold on him breaks when Yana becomes a god, it makes me, when I'm going back to do the character study, want to see how Sia had already begun to change in book two. But because he's not a main character, it's not a, not seen as much. But he had to start changing before, like at the start of book one, because book one is being told in the past. Like, so just something to think about from even you giving the summary to think about that. My first question was, so the twins, Dekka and Shahar, are, like, very important to the story, and they're both power-hungry for, like, very different ways. I was wondering which twin you preferred, and what did you think about their dynamic with Sia? Oh, I forgot to mention during the plot summary that it kind of comes back that um, that Dekka and Sia are so obviously in love, and Shahar was cut out. Um, at one point, she does threaten... Um, to put like an actual sigil on Deca because he hasn't had one before, but she was going to put one on him to like mind control him basically. Um, like what happened with their dad slash uncle. Um, was it from Ash? So well, did you, that. was that part, I think that might've been a major plot point you didn't cover. Yeah, that was a major plot point I hadn't covered. No, the dad part. What was the thing about the dad sigil? Oh, that his, um, he had an actual sigil. Like most of the Aramari just have like the sigils that are like only partial. Like they don't make them have loyalty to the family, but like the dad is like one of the last Aramari who actually still has that loyal, like forced loyalty sigil. Uh, so for me, it would be Deca. Um, so it's interesting because one, I don't think so even with creating a new triad, they're going to have the same issue that they already had because all of them don't love each other equally and in the same way. And they can't possibly because they are twins, right? So it wouldn't be in the same way. Um, so I, I think it makes sense because I mean, that's all, I feel like that's always going to be a thing when there's three people like somebody is going to eventually feel left out. Uh, but Decca all the way. Like, I never liked Shahar. I didn't like her as a kid. I don't like her now. She was my least favorite of the two. Yeah, same. I liked Decca much more than I liked um, Shahar. I th actually wrote at some point, I was lightly annotating, and at some point I had wrote that she's so annoying. <laughs> I like underlined it in like black pen. I was like, can you just stop talking, please? Like I was just 
so strongly annoyed. So I definitely liked, oh, hey, <laughs> I definitely liked Decca much more. I also liked more of his story of having to be sent away and then severing all communication with his sister and then just learning all that he had to about Scriveners. I don't know how to say that word, <laughs> but down to like him writing all the sigils all over his body to give him power. Like I just found his, his road to power much more interesting to read about than Shahar. And I was annoyed. <laughs> Oh, uh, Deidre, the question had been, what did you think of the twins? Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. I could hear y'all, but I guess you couldn't see me. Yeah, I um, can't see Shumla either, so she's going to leave and come back. We're, we're, we're out here trying to survive. Okay, so I I liked um, the way their, their dynamic in whatever scene. Like, I didn't think Shahar was a good person or a good kid. Like, she was I mean, uh, Aaron Mary, so but as well as Dika, but like I like Dika uh, a little better, or her, her Deca, I'm sorry, um, a little better. And I haven't gotten to the part, I mean, I feel that Sia has always liked uh, Deca a little bit more, even from the meeting, so I haven't gotten to the point where they've had sex yet, but I mean, might as well, they're twins, you know what I'm saying? He's just gonna look you know, even it out. Um, but <laughs> uh, that's Shahar. And then she's, I, I imagine, like, I'm sure she's going to get in my nerves whenever she throws her tantrum about uh, being left out. I'm sure she's going to get in my nerves. So. There's that. So for me, it's that couple. all the way um can you guys hear me yeah you're like pausing a little bit like it's a little bit of a lag but i can hear you fine okay um so i was saying um deca all the way for me i didn't like shahar from the moment she came on page something about her was icky she was giving me samina vibes i don't like it um, <laughs> and, you know, after, like, throughout this whole story, she was talking about how she misses her brother so much. She just wants to talk to her brother, see her brother. Then once Sia tells her that he, he does not want to be friends with her anymore, he doesn't like her more than he loves uh, Dekka, she flips her switch and then she, she threatens Dekka to put that true sigil on his forehead. So he has to obey whatever she commands. And then she's like, and I'm not going to tell you who to love, but, you know, Sia has some bad history with our family. So, and I was like, this bitch, I, no, no. So, she, yeah, so she's, yeah, she needs to go. That's why after her entire life, she was lonely. So that's what she deserves. I completely agree. Completely agree. The many times she had to be like, this is my daddy house. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. Yeah, Shahar was like, yeah, she was just hard to like. Like, I was like, what? I don't understand the draw to her. Like, when Sia was, when she was in his graces, he was like, oh, she's beautiful. Her, her soul draws me in. And I'm like, I feel like that was him being a horny teenage boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just him being like boobs. <laughs> right. Because, bro. Yeah, because if, if they hook up later, by the time he sees Decca again, he's like 18 or 20. He looks 20, but he's like 18 or something. So, like, he has gone through some stuff and has matured more. So, I feel like that would be a more genuine love whether that be romantic or friendly, even because you you know you just have more life experience under other than you know you like to play games together, which is kind of sort of where he was in his journey when he and um, Shahar hooked up. So, like in the race, and he was just really being a, a horny teenager. Really. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I felt like I was like, well, for me, it was super obvious throughout the book 
how much he loved Decca in comparison to her because he wouldn't see him. Like he he would be the one thinking about him. He'd be the one like I can hear him or I can feel him or his desire for me or his want for me, but I won't say nothing. Or like when he was like, shall I kill her for you and make you air? Like all the little things, I was just like, this ain't ever going to work out in her favor. Because I think, and here's the interesting part. Outside of Yana, has there ever been a female Air Mary we've liked? Questions that need answers. I don't think so. <laughs> we at least kind of like Tavril. Like, we like Tavril. We like Becky. It's something Josh about the Air Mary women. Like, mm -hmm. I guess Rat's okay, but she's like really far in the mood. Like, she's yeah, she's only got like, right. She's just she's working a, there, really. She's like fourth or fifth. Down the line, the one that was like Remy's girlfriend, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, like that's way far off of Aaron. Yeah. Mary. She, like, you know, was none like, of them that grew up in the place, right? But like, actual like bloodline Air Mary, like, actually have to go through the succession ceremony or whatever. Like, even Kenneth, I don't think we would have liked Kenneth if we would have got like a book from her thing, which I'm low key hoping that we get a story from like her point of view and what it was like to be there, but. You know, if we don't, I'm gonna definitely be upset. So I just want to throw that out there. To your point, Shay, like Shahar basically manipulated Sia from from jump, like or tried to. She tried to put like force him into being friends and playing a game and do it. Like she tried to order him to show them the way home or get them home or whatever on their first meeting. So she from she just continually was a bad friend whether or not she was mad at him about being a bad friend. She was also terrible. As she, I think Shahar has always been kind of wishy-washy. Like, what was it when she'd asked Sia to kill her mom for her? And then Sia gets angry enough at her to actually do it. And she's like, but I love her. <laughs> she was like, Armari, showing affection. What is this? I, d I didn't get Sia's like affection for her or like desire for her. I was like, why? Why? She doesn't bring anything to the table. I really thought, I really think it's just his nature of being a child. Like think about how many of us have friendships with people that we just knew were bad or bad for us or bad to us when we were younger, just because we like one simple thing about them, right? So like, I feel like that's the only reason it makes sense. Cause like throughout, even when he talks to them, he says like things like when they're kids, like, wow, you know, children really do know a lot if like you just sit down and listen to them and things like that. So I think it was like, I don't think had he met them as a teenager, this story could have possibly have happened. I think he had to meet them when they were young and be in that moment and see them as children for it to happen like that is my thought for the story. Yeah, I thought um, Decca's story was interesting in that I thought the whole reason he did the whole sigil thing was so that he could be Sia's equal. And like when Sia became mortal, he's like, I mean, you're my equal now. <laughs> and Sia said that was like the most Aramari thing you'd ever heard him say. <laughs> um, yeah, you, know was, also, oh, go ahead. you know what's also fucked up is that Decca himself, he was like, oh, I'm going to be my sister's weapon. And then she goes around and make, you know, what betrays him by saying that stuff. And was like. She thought he hated her, which is, I mean, not to say that uh, he shouldn't, but she they didn't talk right because he didn't answer her letter so she was just the like, last time they saw each other he was being blamed for the whole thing really when it was one another one of her manipulations up until what 10 years later when he was at his final deadline to return from i forgot what they called scrivener school i forgot what they called it yeah i know i was thinking i know i was like let my twin who i love get sent away and return my letters unopened because to me that says one thing right like for them not to be open means that you didn't read them ain't no way i'm not showing up yeah like, like i'm pulling I'm, up i don't I'm, care about I'm pulling up. like i don't care up my twin her and we know she gotta die like you have to die because one of us have to take your place like that's just how the stuff goes so like 
I'm not going to, if my thing is from jump, I'm never going to let nobody turn me bad. I'm going to always be the good person. Like, you didn't try hard enough for me. Not for your twin. Not for your twin. You didn't try hard enough. So, yeah. I I me feels like she wanted to be that heir Mary. He did. And she wanted to do it where she wouldn't have to kill her brother, I think. I think she wanted the power, but just without killing her brother. And this was the easiest way to do it. And then she was justifying what she was doing by saying, oh, this and all that. Like, what she was saying to see in the beginning. So... And then she also said, um, oh, he talked to, when she was talking about putting the sigil on him, that that guy that talked about wanted to kill her mother for the process. This is hypocritical all around. I did chuckle a little after Sia had died and uh, Deka had died and Shahara's all sad and she like walked into the temple room where they had sex and she's like and this is where they taught me how to love and I was like <laughs> oh my god I so underlined wild. that and was like that's <laughs> what I just had a really hard time with that part I was like you know what Shahara I'm gonna skip on <laughs> over that like she's that's just real weird. so <laughs> weird like she's looking necklaces <laughs> yeah <laughs> what is going yeah, on yeah like she took she you took didn't have to remind like, us <laughs> She's definitely got some issues. It though. literally made me think of when uh, they talk about on the the Chappelle show when they used to talk about like the Rick James and he like licked the side of the face and was like, "I'm Rick James, enjoy yourself." Like when I read that, legit, that's what I was like. I was like, "This is just." I don't, I don't want him to ever have sex with you again. Like, could you just never? I'm so mad this happened. Oh, y'all. I don't like that girl. That's there's just that I don't like it. Dang, I feel like there's gonna be like a God's War situation down the line of where she's like the attempt in the whole thing and she like makes a grab for power because I feel like she's just gonna get left out again. The way I'm like, I don't like, who which one of y'all is bringing life so that y'all can create life because I don't think it's you, Shahar. I don't think you care enough to be the god of life in your triad. Like, I just really don't. And I, you the god of destruction to me in your little three. I feel like I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, don't like it. I, don't like it. I wish I wish she wouldn't, they, she, they wouldn't have to be the trio. And then it, would, it could have just been the duo. Instead of she dies and then goes with them. I'm like, no, no. Like, why do you think Sia was so lonely? And why do you think, like, he of all the godlings was able to make this new trio? I think it was because he is the first. Um, and I think he was so lonely because the change had already started to happen before the book started. So I think that, like, as he got more, as he, like, was growing, or well, I feel like he was already, he had started aging from the time that Yana had become a god. And so I think that that's why it was like a little nagging thing, like a little thing that like just kept going and just kept going. And that's why he followed her to a tempest, like in like chapter one is what my thought was. And then like on the history of the gods, I thought because he was the first godling I thought that one, like, and if it was like, I wonder what a god and a godling could make, right? And to see what happened. And not realizing that because he was the first and so therefore you were the child, I don't think she knew that it would kill him from jump. Like, and I think once she knew, I think she knew that the death of him was going to be something bigger than what she could handle is what I think it was. And so I think that was like the beginning of it. Uh, and to me, I feel like that's the reason why he was the one that could was because he was the first to do something that was like completely unnatural for them, if that makes sense. Because like in the stories, like they mate with godlings, right? Like they'll sleep with each other, but they don't procreate with each other. So that was my thought. Yeah, I agree. I thought that it was because he was the first one and maybe not all of them would have this transformation but I consistently was writing 
because it was mentioned that like Yanny had said something about controlling dimensions or like, oh, this happens in every dimension or something like that. And I was thinking, so are y'all managing all these other dimensions and just spending a lot of time in this one, in this universe? Like I started going into like alien theories <laughs> within my annotations. So maybe there are all these different realms and universes and the gods or the godlings have to like grow and mature and survive and then they all break up into threes i don't know but i just also thought that it was the first and that memory of him having a kid seeping in more and more that it was just detrimental to him and that's why we watched it happen but yeah yeah i agree with that marine Shay. i think it's because he's the oldest and she made a good point that he was going through his transformation turning into a god so he would feel like he he deserves to be on the level of the three so that's probably why he was feeling so lonely uh yeah so that's um i don't know that i'm at the point where i can like answer that and stand 100 percent behind my answer but what I can say is I do agree that it, it, at least in part, in probably the majority part, has to do with him being the first. But also, you know, we, as he's going through this book, he never really, other than Shahar and Decca, he never really latches on. He doesn't have like a lasting friendship with anybody other than those two. Just, um, and like, um, I forget if it was Bahad or the dream god, which I forget how to say his name because I just started Asana? the audio. I thought him yes, and Asana, Asana had been a thing and then he like pushed Nasana away and Asana He did, but that's that was my point. Like he he really never like truly connected with anybody, like not even a pet. Like the humans are pets, I guess, sort of in this context, but like he never latched onto one or a couple people other than those two throughout the three books. Um, and he kind of liked Yana, but that's only because she became, you know, of, of who was inside of her. So um, I just think that he, once he found those, those spirits, those souls to latch on to, it was like inevitable that he was gonna have to go ahead and merge with them in some way. Actually, and DJ, you made me think about something. Like, the truth is, is that he had an attachment to the three, like, period, more than anybody else. So, like, I think the, like, the, the, like, seeing or thinking on a God level was, like, you've seen this level of loyalty through the gods that they have to each other that you automatically have to them as well. And more so than probably any other child that they have. Like, I think the closest one would be Jakar, because that would be the only other one that, like, fought through that and was like loyal. So I think that that plays a part into it too, is if this is the only type of friendship you've witnessed and this closeness, you really can't settle for anything else. So I feel like that makes sense why he like clung to them more than anything. And I hadn't even like thought about that till you said what you said. So that was dope. I was wondering what you thought of Sia and Ahad's relationship. Why do you think like Ahad changed between uh, Broken Kingdoms and this book, like his relationship with Aramari and his goals and stuff. So this con this book has made me think a lot about like childhood innocence and understanding and moving through adolescence to adulthood. And there's a conversation that happened in book two where Maddie talked about how like Yana was really like the youngest of them and Sia was like the oldest. And so when I think of a hide, I think of a hide in the ways of like a hide is young. So like when he first came out, like he had a young mindset of like attaching to the air Mary and being useful. Cause it was again, like the only world that he knew. And I think that like, as he goes from, Naha to Ahado uh, to Ahad, like all of it was like transition and him growing and him changing because he is still part Nahado who always changes. And so I just think that the, the way the relationship changed and like him coming into his nature was more so like 
an inevitable part of his journey from being part Nahado and also from being like young. Cause like, so, and again, this is like me realizing I'm have to do like a third read through, read through. I'm curious of if like the truth of the matter was, is he had technically always been a version of a godling. It just wasn't in our view site because of how it happened, right? Because book two, we don't really get him, but from like Ori's perspective. So we don't know about his abilities or anything like that at that point. And I've like, it's led me to, led me to wonder if it was like, um, like kind of like the demons, like a power that like grows or that you have and then it becomes a thing. But so yeah, that was my thoughts on, on him and his character. Yeah, I think, um, between Sia and Ahad, their relationship, I feel like it was kind of like um like a father son relationship turned maybe to lovers, and then um I feel like maybe Ahad felt abandoned by Sia, um that's why he had so much resentment, and it was said that he like throughout his life he because of the torture and this. The stuff that he was, um, what's the word? He was enduring because of the air and Mary. He was apathetic. Throughout all his life until he met like Lee. And then eventually he found out his nature, which is to love. So I agree with Shay that, yeah, I, um, when Yaney made him a godling, it was like he was born again like a newborn and then he he went through his you know adolescence and then now adulthood I guess and um I don't like all these gods have so many feelings they feel them so deeply um so it makes sense why he would feel resentment it feels like all of Sia's siblings felt resentment towards him because of um his role in the gods war and maybe and afterwards, after that. Um, so yeah, I think um, it's an interesting relationship. I, I, I kind of feel bad that they never kind of got a resolution to like, like actually, actually fixing their relationship. But I guess, um, you know, he has glee, so maybe he doesn't need it. Um, I haven't gotten to the point where um, I can't, again, stand behind my answer 100%, but where I'm at, I don't truly understand why um, um, Ahmad is so resentful towards me, not truly yet, um, because I'm just understanding that Ahmad is, Hado is, I forgot his name, Naha, uh, from the first book. Um, and so it doesn't right now make sense to me why he would resent the human form of one of his parents because like it's not his fault either but um so their relationship is is the, the, the tension between them is weird to me right now like i don't truly understand it and it says what do you think i have feelings about I don't know yet. I can't answer the second part of the question about why his feelings changed about Aramary. I feel like maybe the resentment is because um, Sia saw him as a baby, like he uh, when he when he was born and stuff. So maybe it's like a resentment that like a child to a parent. That's right, because he was taking care of him. He had to take yeah. care. Of him. He was in charge of this. Like you couldn't protect me. Couldn't, you know, you couldn't you let them do this type of thing, you know? Maybe I guess. Like, yes, yeah, so uh, I can see how if you're technically a younger sibling, basically, technically, I don't know. But you're in charge of this being, and I can see resenting having to take care of this being because you didn't ask to do this and you didn't ask for this thing to be here. And that's interesting that so that you brought that up there or remembering that because he didn't attach to a high hado naha either even after like he he learned to care for him but he didn't really attach to him you know what i'm saying he like got used to it basically i think um it made me think from what you guys are saying that uh 
I think that it's interesting because he's an older sibling, but he's a child and he can't grow up. And I think they were expecting an older sibling. And for him, I'm not an older sibling. I just came first. Like my age doesn't change. And so I think because the rest of them are around humans and do get to see what older siblings do and how they act, there's some sort of familiarity that they were like expecting. And it's interesting because like throughout the story, Sia says that like, I was a bad older sibling. Like I was supposed to, but I didn't. And it's like, but you would have been going against your nature had you done it. Like there's nothing you could have done. And I think it's, it makes me think about the first conversation Carl has with him. And he was like, it's your nature. You can't not do it. I don't think if you knew you would have. And the truth is, I don't think if Sia knew all these things and like was aware, like neglecting his siblings, what it would do, he would have done it. Except for that naturally he could not have. And I think that's the, the mind boggling part of what the nature is. No, that's important because you said like Insa was like not grow old, you fool, grow up, which is you know a big difference. There's a big difference between getting being 80 because I've I mean not necessarily any immature 80 year olds, but I've seen some immature 60 year olds, that's for sure. Or like 50. Um I was gonna say something kind of bad about our Supreme Court justices, but like, look at who, like that whole tantrum that was had a couple hearings ago, and still, so like, that's not mature to do that all on national TV. while you trying to be confirmed for the highest judicial position? Anyway, I didn't mean to go there, but that had happened. Yeah, it's interesting with see it, like, because they said that his nature and his dedication to his nature is what makes him so strong. Like all the godlings have said it. And it seems like that's also isolated him from all the godlings is that the commitment to this nature. Um, um, I don't think Emma Ray even said your thoughts. Yeah, I was gonna say, I definitely probably cut Emma Ray off. I'm super duper sorry, I did not mean oh, to. Oh no, I was trying to figure out how on earth I was gonna answer the question because I'm also on the field of also thinking that their relationship was just weird. I feel like I would have a harder uh, opinion if I read it a second time and paid attention. Because to be honest, <laughs> the first book, the difference between Naha and Nahadoth, I didn't, I had a hard time grasping what that meant. So then when they were like, oh, it's a form of him. I was like, it's like a weird twin. Like I had a hard time distinguishing, oh, these are two different beings. So that just kind of screwed up who this character was for me in the other two books because I already didn't view, like I just had a hard time <laughs> figuring out. But I think it does make sense like uh, with his sibling relationships of his siblings wanting him to be like an older brother and guide him, guide them and protect them. And so frequently, whenever he ran into his siblings, they all told him like, well, you're really selfish and you only think of yourself. But yeah, picture saying that to like a seven-year-old. Of course, why would a seven-year-old care about you? <laughs> or like think that they have to well, show you the his, universe. Like his of, favorite of time age was like eight or nine. So like, yeah. again, like kids can be really caring when they want to be. Mm -hmm. when they want to be other yeah. than that kids are assholes mm -hmm. kids make the worst bullies like they do yeah. like kids suck yeah and after imagine now being a kid, kid tell you you ugly you gonna be questioning your beauty for the rest of your yo, life like so let true. a grown man be like ugly you be like okay whatever let a like seven year old be like you look bad you gonna be like maybe i shouldn't have came out the house today like it's just it's That's so true. And then it's after something. like being an older sibling and then thinking of having thousands of other siblings at some point, yeah, you're going to stop visiting them when they're babies. That's tiring. Like, of course. So I don't know. I think I'm looking, eventually I will reread all of this now that I understand this man's character <laughs> and I'll go through understanding what is happening. And then I'd probably have a better answer to that question. <laughs> Uh, I didn't really understand the relationship either because like based on the first book I was expecting Sia to have done something to like actively antagonize uh, Ahad that like he was upset about but it seemed like it was more like he felt neglected than anything like I know Sia said that he like punched him once but like that was when he couldn't talk and he was like biting everybody like it seems like that wouldn't be a thing that he would hold against him um, so I was kind of thrown by that um, I thought Ahad's 
like I guess how jaded he became with like the RMR was interesting. So it seemed like he had kind of wanted like he had been playing to climb the ranks. And it seemed like he might have actually liked that woman that he like slept with to like so he's the whole reason he is even Shahar and Deka's great grandpa is because he was like trying to curry favor with the Aramari and so they're like sleep with Tavril's wife and like make sure that he finds out about it and he did that and then Tavril was just like good for you <laughs> and that is real- some tea holy shit but he did say that he was ready to climb the ring so you know you gotta use what you can you know i guess until this gave you i don't know <laughs> you just gotta use it. yeah and that just seemed to shake ahab um that no one cared that it he- was funny because he thought he was sterile too right he, he didn't think he could have kids yeah he didn't think he could have kids. surprise Gain his final blessing. Um, I don't know if I had any other thoughts about Ahab. It was just it was just interesting to watch him believe in something like so genuinely, like that he could make it as an Aramari, and then realize that like he he just couldn't. Um, There's no saving him. But I thought it was interesting that he ran a brothel. Yeah, it's interesting because him and Sia have such complicated relationships with sex after their enslavement. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that he would return to that. Yeah. Because Sia mean, was more like, don't talk to me about it. Like, don't even ask. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he, when he had described it, it was like, oh, we're giving mortals a chance to feel like what it would be like to be a god or something like that. So he, he avoided using more sex, I think. So That's true. Um, so something I'd realized was that this book feels like a repeat of the first in some really interesting ways, and that the first one was about Yena, um, sort of taking on this parent role and eventually becoming a god. And in this one, C is also realizing that he is a father and becoming a god in his own right. And for both of these stories, I think motherhood is like a very important thing. Like Yena's relationship with her mother was like throughout the book. And in this book, we really like question a lot of what Sia says his relationship with Enifa was. And I was wondering, how did you feel? Did your feelings about Enifa change after you read this book? And how do you think like Sia's relationship with Enifa compares with Yaina's relationship with her mom? So before we continue or answer that question, I think this might be a part of the review that we left out uh, about the Inafosia God's War actuality part. Oh, yeah, so that did get left like, out. Revisit that. Yeah, so um, um, during the God's War, you know, everyone has been very upset with a Tempest because of what he did after the fact. But part of what started the God's War is that a Tempest had been chilling with Shahar and his kid and he had been fine. And um, Enifa and Nahado sent Sia over to check on him and find out what he was doing. And he didn't like that a Tempest was just like hanging out with his kids and his family and like being fine. He was like, I'm better than this kid. Our family is better than that family. And so they went back. He went back and told them that like they should go get a Tempest. Like, I don't know what it was he told them about the family, but he just said, come get a Tempest. And so they came and kind of like mm-hmm. tore the family apart and that. Yeah, I was surprised. I was like, door. wow, Sia started a lot of shit. He started yeah. a lot of shit. I see why people were saying. <laughs> No, that's just like his his child nature. I would have I haven't got there yet, but like that's his child nature, like to just like you know do this because he you know it upset him in the moment and don't really think yeah. about the that's next true. consequences of it. You know, so. children right. like you the last thing. You see your dad playing with another kid, with another woman playing like mom and dad. Like you're like yeah, most kids will go snitch, right? Like in separate family situations, daddy got a new girlfriend, mama got a boy. Like when they don't like it, they don't like it, right? Like it makes sense to me, but also it's like it. He's the child, you're the parent, so it don't make me feel no difference about a tempest. Like I know some people it do, but it don't because y- y'all know he's a child. Like period. Like that's the one thing. If there's anybody that's true to their nature, y'all know it's him. 
y'all had discussions y'all just didn't want to have. Like that just was the truth of it. Like, should have said we're away. not gonna go over the fact that a tempest don't change, but a tempest changed in eight years. Y'all not gonna let me forget that. Like he changed eight years. years. So oh, like, yeah. again, it's still a tempest's fault. Period. I expected nothing less from you, Shay. I mean, my feelings kind of changed about Tempest. I was like, he's okay now. He's like, I think Not my- you gave him a nickname and everything, Shamla. Damn. <laughs> when did I give him You're getting soft. You're getting soft. I'm just saying. I think my feelings, tra- like my my vitriol feelings for him transferred from him to Shahar. Maybe. I don't know. That's fair. No, I think that's fair. Because whether it's been eight years, like uh, overall 16 years, because did we ever find out how long Ori has been dead? Ori's not dead. She's not dead. Yeah, she's not dead. Oh, yeah, she, she didn't even get to that part. Oh, <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> she's not dead. Well, okay. Okay, so then, okay, so then a total of like 16 years since he got, since he met Ori, right? And so where we are at this point in the story. I thought it was a little longer because I thought like Lee was like a full adult. Yeah, yeah. It's been like 60 okay. years. So it's been like 60? 66 years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, oh. like Lee looked 30, but she was like, I've been here a long time. Yeah. Okay. So it's been like yeah, 60 something years because Shahar <clears throat> and Decca are like the Travril's great great grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. So well, okay. Great. So he had a change of heart. He didn't kill Ori a Tempest. He didn't kill Ori in book two. And then he didn't kill his own kid. I think that was a mom. He didn't kill his own kid. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's changed. I mean, fifty years still is not that long in God's time. Yeah, because they were locked 60. up for millennia. So yeah. again, no, 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 no. It don't make no sense. It make no sense for me, y'all. Sixty years, but it took you two thousand. Like, yeah, it made me question what his nature be, really and is. And you was pretending to be Varane. I ain't forgot that either. Like y'all just be letting people yeah. off the hook. That's why I can't bridge Supreme Court justice. Cause no, I ain't forgot. Rehabilitated my ass. Like no, I ain't forgot. Emma Ray, what did you? I guess we kind of talk, start to talk <laughs> instead about um the God's War and what we thought thought about like Sia's role in it. Yeah. Um, it what just it it made me think what if if we were being like lied to what a tempest's nature really was like is it really he doesn't change or is it he changes when he wants to or is it just a completely different thing because lots of other gods or godlings i guess we're talking about i don't know now i feel like i sound crazy but like lots of other godlings were talking about how it took them a long time to find their nature so what if like a tempest was really conniving and was like, yeah, I don't change. And then <laughs> did his own thing, but his nature is actually something else. Cause it seems like his also must have a part to do with love. Cause the minute he has a woman, right. He has a somebody, kid. A heart. Yeah. Then he's like, Oh, the world for you, my dear. So he's a family I don't know. man. What he really I is. <laughs> no, I think he just grabs on to whatever female is into him because of the way I don't think he's a female. Just, I think it's whoever he loves. Because like he yeah. did all of that because of Nahado. Like, I'm saying female specifically because of Yana um choosing Nahado and Inafa sort of um well he killed her, so I think he just, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, and then the heart, he was she was manipulating him, and then when he once he meets Ari, it's he it starts to change a little bit. So that's yeah, I just think there's something there about the female component of the change, but maybe maybe not. Quiet as it's kept, the only person who don't change is Sia. That part. Not truly. He grows up, but he remains true to himself. Right. Like he don't yeah. like he doesn't change. Like, and literally it's cause y'all made him grow up. Had that not mm-hmm. happened, he'd still be the eight-year-old pushing Air Mary kids around the under palace. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, I just was towards the end, he was starting to feel those feelings of being a father. That's some sort of change, I think. 
Because he was feeling but guilty. I mean, like, not a change he does. Like, it's a okay. change because of something in a FMAE happened. Like, not okay, I a thing yeah, he yeah. would have done. Not from is my himself. Yeah. Right. Because, okay. like, again, he's a child. And, like, that's the whole, like, yeah. point of the book. So, for me, it's like, he, like, you, Enifa had to, like, make a change happen. Mm -hmm. Because he, again, who else yeah. don't change? Madden change. Naha don't change. E Tempest change. See it been the same see it the whole time. Maybe Lil hasn't changed. Maybe her too. Not too I'm much. Saying, if we don't get a story for Lil, I'm just like, <laughs> it's a travesty. I'm like, can I be your Patreon NK? And can we request <laughs> that if we get in that like top tier? Like if that's a perk, I want it. I want it. If that's a perk. All Lil wants to eat is eat. That's it. She's fine. I'm okay going on bar hopping and, and restaurant hopping with Liv, you know, cleaning up the trash, you know, eating a little fried fritter or something. She's good. She's good. Right. Like, haven't, like, because only three of her kind live to adulthood. So, you know, that got to be a cool story. Like, she done been through some stuff, all I'm saying. What did you think of Sia's relationship with the Tempest? Like, I was surprised, like, at the good moments, like, how, like, at peace and in tune they seem to be with each other. Because I feel like Sia's someone who's, like, always doing something, always plotting, always scheming. And then with the Tempest, it seems like he's just, like, sitting down, coloring or something like that. That's what I imagine him doing. So I think that it, it makes sense. And so, like, the first time that I realized he loved the Tempest was when, in, like, chapter one or two, when I think Decca was like, but, like, he probably misses you, right? And he was like, nah. And he was like, yeah, like, that's what dads are supposed to do. And the way he, like, hesitated and, like, stopped let me know that, like, there was something more there. And so it made me think about how, like, people say that love and hate aren't opposites. They're really the same thing. Uh, and so that there was so much hatred for feeling, as we learn later, like left, like that, like when you decided to, when attempt is being you decided to make a family with somebody else for your own happiness, you didn't want me anymore. And like that hurt. And so like knowing that it makes it only makes more sense that the only way that could hurt is if y'all were close before. And then it makes me think about like, because we don't know what time is for them, like how many centuries it was just the three of them and Sia. Like that's like, because he doesn't, and we don't hear it till the third book, but in the third book, he calls a Tempest his father. Like he doesn't just act like a Tempest is just the third God, like what we've heard in like book one and book two. Like it's like in book three, we really realize like, nah, this wasn't just some man that killed my mama. This was like my daddy that killed my mama and betrayed my other daddy, you know? So that was kind of what I, what the third book like helped me to see was that it wasn't a hate, like it wasn't indifference towards a Tempest. It was really like love and hurt for him. I don't know if I answered the question, but I think yeah. For me, um, I think go ahead, Shama. Go ahead. Oh, well, her internet is coming back on. So, Inafa, did my feelings change about her? Not yet, but once I get to the part about her making a kid with Sia, maybe, because, like, okay, me being in 2022, the incest of it all, I'm not real into it. And there, Sia is a child, so why would you want to make a child with a child? I can't really conceptualize that part. So maybe yes, my my feelings will change, but I haven't got to there. And I, I, I don't know. Like I'm feeling weird about getting to that part, y'all. Not gonna lie. Like I already had probably a child having sex, like he's 16, yes. But like oof.
Did you want to go, Shamla? I think Jeter was going. She had just finished. She finished? Did you finish? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my internet. Uh, so I, I was saying, I think the relationship between Sia and a Tempest in this book really softened me up to the Tempest, I guess, to that part, because I it really showed how much they do love each other. And um, like at the end when Sia like sacrifices himself and how, you know, how the Tempest was crying over his his body, it, it, it really softened me up to the Tempest. It really made me see that he does really love her. Maybe just the way he loves sometimes is bad. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just love seeing that relationship. It was, it was really nice to see, you know. That second part of that question was weird. I don't know if I answered it, but like, see is, I mean, Yana's and, um, her mother's relationship compared with Sia. I, I don't know that, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that they really right like in the way that Yana's mother sort of raised her to be a, a certain thing. I don't know that they did that for Sia unless they created his nature too. But I don't. Can y'all tell me? Did they say that they made sure they wanted Sia to be the eternal child? I don't remember that being a thing in book two. I don't think but, they create the nature. I think the nature. Comes I didn't from think so either. From. Yeah. Okay, I thought so too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So like in the way that Yana's mother sort of her her she essentially if I'm not misremembering this, she basically used her to become um the heir. So and I don't think that Sia's parents really is that wrong, Shay? Yeah, no, so she didn't use her daughter so she pledged her daughter to them to save her husband's life. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But she used her. She. I don't think that. I don't. So I was like, just saying it wasn't to be air. Okay. Like, okay. And she wasn't born yet. Like it was like that. She's not pregnant. I don't yes. know about it. It's just like, hey, whatever you need to do, to save my husband's life. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that. I don't think that the three did that to see you in any way, unless I just haven't got that far yet. So I don't know how to compare the relationship. Yeah, I think maybe to save her husband's life and then maybe get revenge on her father, probably, maybe, if I'm remembering correctly. Well, so, no, to get revenge on her father was to marry the man she married. Oh, That was yeah. what happened, remember? Because, like, she came to them and asked, like, how did she get rid of the sigil? And they were like, marry somebody of low blood. Like, do that. And that's what she did. And that's how she got the sigil. Like, it didn't even get removed because, like, Varane's the one who killed her, right? But it made him disown her. And so I think by the time that they, like, Varane put the walking death on him, she was in love with him at that point. And so it wasn't just to get back at daddy thing. Um, but because I forgot about the NFL side of the question, um, I do, I dislike NFL way more than I did in the other two books, because the truth of the matter is as much as like, we might say, this is a bad thing. You could have just killed call because the truth is when you go through book one and book two to book three, it talks about how NFL like just made life and killed it. Like she would just be experiment. Like she was literally like a child, like putting chemistry things together. So I don't necessarily think she did it to be bad. I think she did it to see what happened. Just like she gave Nahadoth and E Tempest the ability to have kids together. Like she just wanted to see what would happen. But the fact that you kept him alive, blocked it from Sia's memory, removed it all you, I think those actions are what may call the God of revenge. Like, I think putting him in this place allowed those things to like happen. So that's what made me dislike Enifa more is that Sia's only dying because you kept this from him for like forever. Cause it's been kept for, from him from since before the gods were. So like, that's what made me dislike her more. Um, and that's what made me think she was worse than Kenneth. Because it also said in the book that Kenneth thought about, like, tried to kill the baby at first. Um, and it was solely because, like, she realized the cost of what she did at that point. 
So that, that's my thoughts on it because I totally forgot that second half. Mark. It really reminded me of the first book between um, Sia and Enifa at the end book of as he grows at the end book, the third book, as he grows up, he starts learning like how ruthless his mom was and how like like when he's a little kid, he's like, oh, my mom's the best and I love her. And we just like hang out and like everything's great. She loves me. And then he's getting older and older and older and older and his memory is coming back to him. And then it's, oh my God, why would she do this to me? And he's seeing more of like her actions that fit in with the, with the three at that time. That was very reminiscent of Yaney going to the Air Mary and then being like, your mom was the worst of all of us. And her being like, no, my mom was great. She raised me. We no she's lovely and everyone being like gosh you're just like her like <laughs> you should be ruthless too it just had such strong parallels but i did also think that that was very interesting that she decided just to lock call away instead of just killing him because i also had remembered how it was like oh she'd just be bringing life and then killing it that made me think of like he was even more of an experiment because she was probably just sitting and watching through the years what was going to happen to call but then also what was going to happen to sia and she just got a front row seat because no one else knew so right, that's the other happen. part nobody like, else knew like you had to do a lot of work to keep this from everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't like it yeah. i can see why tempest kind of disliked her she was doing too much right and she was the youngest of them like there is a lot there's a lot like if more of it i would say that like for me i bet like it rocks see it because like that's your whole beef for a tempest like that's what's propelled you all three books is like what he did to Enifa. and while he didn't know what Enifa did so it wasn't like he justified in what he did at all like does that make you feel differently now I thought it was interesting in that, like, what was it? So I think up until that point, we don't really know a whole lot about Anifa. Like, we know that Sia loves her, thinks she's the best, but also, like, he loves Nahadoth and thinks he's the best. And we know what Nahadoth gets up to. I don't know if we'd ever really seen, like, like, we knew that Anifa is the goddess of death and stuff. But I don't know if we'd really seen, like, how far she would go. I feel like you said that, like, Nahadoth is bad, and I just would like to interrupt and be like, what does Nahadoth do that, like, so that he's not her dose child what is that supposed to mean like i just feel like your tempest allegedly is showing right now and i just wanted to point that out real quick just 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 real quick i'm saying that nahadoth likes to kill people and nahadoth is about having fun no matter what and so but i mean they all was he killing people, people, people before he was a slave yeah wasn't he where in the book do we get that I thought they had the stories about him doing that. But he was a slave when he was killing people. Like, no, when before. He did all of like, I thought they had the stories from, what was it, like, Yaina's granny and stuff like that. That, like, sometimes he would, like, marry women and be great and it'd be fine. And sometimes he would kill them. But I thought that was just, like, them giving you stories about the Night Lord and why you shouldn't trust him because he's the heir Mary, right? Like, nobody, like, none of the other than them killing demons because they are, like, going to kill them right and that's all the gods not just <laughs> not just not though before he was a slave when was he killing humans i'm just saying i think i'm just saying. Agree, disagree i'm just saying that <laughs> they're not really pressed about stuff that happens to mortals in general and they're the gods so their moral system is just different from anything we're used to um so i think that was like wild to see i thought i don't know if i got the impression from this book that sia was hurt by what anatha did like he remembered having sex with her in general because he said that had happened several times um and i think he like felt like bad that he couldn't be more for her um but I don't think I'd realize that NFO was so calculating. Like, Emma Ray, when you pointed out that, like, she was able to watch, like, probably, like, Call had never met her, right? Like, she was just watching what he did, like, all by himself in this pocket dimension. Yeah. Um, I think Call said that she was the number one target for him if he ever got out. But the Tempest already killed her. So then it was Sia, who was yeah. the next one. So. And, like, I don't know. It, she kind of reminded me of who was it 
in Greek mythology, Echidna, the goddess, maybe not a goddess, but like a monster, just like births other monsters. Like just how she like thinks about. I don't know, it was just interesting to watch how she thought about children, like not necessarily as like a everyone as being as close with her as Sia, but like as like experiments and just like seeing what would happen. Um, was a shift. Uh, I thought that my my general take my general takeaway was I think that like Sia felt like less shocked about it than Yena was her was her mom. Um, but I don't know. I'd have to rethink about that. So that was everyone for that question, right? No one had anything else to say about uh, Anifa and moms and stuff in the book. Okay, well, I'll so... say throughout um, N.K. Jemison's work, the way she does these parent-children relationships really hits. Like, it really hits in my heart. I feel like Ori and her dad had like the least complicated <laughs> like parent child relationship I've seen in any of any of the books. The more that I hear y'all say that, the more I keep thinking about how she was like, no, but some grad student somewhere is gonna tell me that I did because they read both my books and da, da, da. so every time we talk about it, like it just makes me giggle because she's gonna be like, nah, I just wrote a story. Like that's it. So I love it. Uh, HR Watch says, NFO reminds me too much of Pink Diamond from Steven Universe. The more you look in her history, the more terrible things that she's done is revealed. Um, I watch Steven Universe, so I appreciate that. Um, but how much to say? Uh, I agree with that. That's definitely that's like terrible. She's terrible. I guess, yeah. Oh my god. I feel like this is basically, this book was basically the arc with um pink diamond and spinel <laughs> this is the steven universe movie but nk jemison did it first <laughs> um my next question was like i feel like throughout the story c is always kind of going like wow like things have changed like the r mari are doing this now a tempest is doing this now um things are really different from what i'm used to and i was wondering um like, why do you think so much change is happening in this book? And, like, what role does it play in the story? Like, I guess for him, too, because he has to change as he's becoming mortal. Honestly, it surprised me it took 60 years for the changes that happened to happen. Like, it just goes to show how much power the Air Mary had that it took that long before people realized, like, they didn't have any power. And also it went like it did go to show how much y'all just thought y'all ruled the world that y'all wasn't paying attention because like Shahar was like, nah, they've been doing it for years. Like our bloodlines don't really exist anymore. And so I think that like in that, um, I think that like change is a character in the book itself. Like, I think that change is a character and how it moves throughout the book is super important because it shows how, like, it affects everything. Like, when Yena became a god, she changed how the entire world worked, like, like Enifa would have done with who she was and bringing life. So it's like, it makes sense that change was going on and it makes even more sense that a child wouldn't notice. Yeah, um, so the biggest probably catalyst for the change is that they don't have the gods under their control anymore. So they literally can't control the rest of the world. And once the rest of the world picked that up, it was like, oh, we don't have to listen to them anymore. We don't have to just sit by and then let them dictate whatever they want. And so because the other, the other tribes and the other countries started realizing that they had to they had to change their ways because oh we can't keep doing this otherwise you know we won't stay in power like they were trying to stay in power but not but they really couldn't so i think that's why it changed and i think cs changing had to do with like him having to grow up physically and then that makes him grow up mentally so he when you i feel like when you grow up when you go from childhood to adolescence to adulthood, your mindset changed and then you start realizing different things about 
the world around you in different perspectives and how you saw the world as a child is not how you it really is or how you see it as an adult so that's um so his change i think was natural i felt like a lot of characters i said i felt like a lot of characters had to learn that like you kind of have to change or you're gonna get you're gonna get left behind um like the RMR for sure. I think it was interesting how like the RMR even as like power changed, like it didn't it didn't, they didn't necessarily become like less awful. Like I remember how like even just how they treat each other in the family had to change because they didn't have like the succession ceremony anymore or like um them being like, "Oh, like we can't we don't just have like all these resources that we can like hoard and stuff. Like we have to actually like have diplomatic relationships with these other countries." So like, you know, having to have like strategic marriages in the family, you know, like how that affected Shahar, like um, that was like putting her in a position that she wouldn't necessarily have been in um, if she'd been born like a generation earlier or, you know, even during like the original Descartes' time. Um, I think there's something about it's also like change is like necessary. And also like, I felt like there's a lot of mourning for the past, especially with Sia's character because it's, it's natural, right? This change is, good like a tempest can't undo it it's what's supposed to happen possibly tied to him making that wish to be the friends forever for the humans but he's always like i miss having my small like kid hands i miss oh i haven't bought myself a new toy in forever like i miss being able to do these things um i think like towards the end he kind of is like making jokes about his age but he kind of just like has to accept it i guess because it's not reversing it but you still always like that regret that the change is happening. I think he's surprised because the the majority like it sort of trickled trickled down from the air Mary, right? Like because nobody else had the same power and they only lost their power because they lost the control of the gods. So when he left Sky initially after he was free. The rest of the world really didn't, or wherever he went, it hadn't changed much. He went to, I forget where he went. I think he went to the God's Realm for a while, right after he was, they were free. And then when he came back, he immediately met Shahar and Deca. So, like, that was his introduction into all the changes that happened with the Air Mary. Like, he'd been, you know, basically jealous of not being able to have the attention of um, Yana and... Um, Mahado, so it, however, or it was like 50 years by that point, they had been free about 50 years, right? By the point that he came back to Sky and went into them. And still, that's not much time in God's time. So like, and he's still the child at that point. So it's just like a lot of combination of things why why he was so surprised because, you know, Aramary had so much power and he had so much so much history with them to to see that you know they don't have that same power not only do they not have power over me anymore but they don't have power over anything else and how they've had to like i think it's just funny how they're just so put out by having to work with somebody else instead of just snapping their fingers like like oh you have to marry for convenience because you need to trade and have an alliance and like did y'all not think i mean obviously you didn't but why did why was this such a bad thing before now like wouldn't you want to have alliances instead of just making people do what you want to do at least you know that they won't turn on you if they come you know <laughs> like so yeah i just think it's interesting that, like the layers of why he didn't notice all the changes until you know whatever time and honestly, I don't think Sia was checking for the mortal realm at all when he was free. So he, he wouldn't he wouldn't care either way. I agree with everyone. Um, but I definitely think him noticing change was definitely tied to his nature, which I think Shay had said and everyone had said. But it just it made me think of like me growing up and noticing things about family members or like longtime friends that I grew up around and being like, that's interesting. I don't remember them 
being like this or doing that thing. And then my mom and dad being like, um, <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> that has always been that person and being like, what? So I think that that was him noticing it so much was just like that progression of him growing up. And then the, the change of the air, Mary was a lot to digest, but I did think that it was going to happen quicker. Like at the end of the first book, I was just picturing everything crumbling down and chaos. And then the next book, uh, they were still ruling and things were still going on. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess change, change I think takes time. <laughs> maybe that was Travril because I think Yaini yeah. picked Travril because she wanted the stability maybe. So I think yeah. maybe it's because of him that they could have gone on longer. And then the descendants after him just had to deal with the aftermath. Good point. Yeah, because I think Tavril was just more strategic about everything. Like the flash that he had, he was going to use for something else, but gave it to Yaney to use. And I mean, he obviously got it back because she couldn't use it. But like he was using his position to move around and do things even before he got there. So I do, I totally agree with the, I feel like part of it being that it lasted that long was for Tavril. Especially because I mean, like we know eight years later, he was already, he'd already hoarded all the God's blood that they had at the house of the living son like he was like preparing to keep them ahead for as long as he could um which again goes to show like why she thought he would have made a good leader anyways for them uh but i so y'all know me and my parallels you know black every day of the world you know every day of my life so when i think about the story right i think about how uh like just when slavery ended right and how like nothing really changed really right because like the people who are in control are still in control so they're still maneuvering like slavery got a new name right and then you get put into slavery because of things that we don't allow you to do and so it's interesting to think about like the air mary as like you know the example of white supremacy in the story and just how much uh everything they did was based off of fear right like you didn't get the slaves to the enslaved people i'm trying to check use that instead of slaves you didn't get enslaved people to stay slaves because they were loyal to you it was because of fear they didn't do anything they didn't maneuver and so i just think about the possibility of what uniting and remembering that they don't have any power would really do because again what happened? The air Mary began to topple, right? Like it takes organization. It takes gatekeeping. Everybody wasn't in on this man's project. Everybody didn't know what he had going on. The people he had were close because they were doing this for 60 years and nobody saw it. Nobody knew who was doing it. Nobody knew where it was coming from. I don't know. It just says, take a page out of my book, Black people, if you're listening is what I got from it just kind of clicked for me. Like before I thought the series was more like about ideas and a plot, but I guess I forgot that it is really about the slow fall of the Armari empire. And now I'm wondering like what it means that like, you know, this new universe that they're populating two of the tree are old, old Armari. <laughs> I don't know if we find out if Tavril and Hado or uh, Ahad ever like, did did Tavril only know Hado or did he also know um, Ahad? But my my point in bringing that up is um, maybe Hado got to the point where he lost hope of being able to affect any kind of change or 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 grow up the ladder anymore, and that is at the point when Tavril died, and so he went to to run the brothel and try to do something else with his life after that point you know what i'm saying so what was it my point in bringing it up the question was about the change right that's what we're still talking about change so so um so it, to me 50 60 years is not that long of a time for a civil like a a, a power that's been ruling forever to fall that's really not that long so it's really just like one person's lifetime basically to real and not even his whole lifetime. And he worked his way up from the bottom. So he has a whole lot of different perspective than anybody else who has run. Like, um, what's her name? Remus? She didn't work her way up from the bottom. She was born into it in the same way because they don't even have the air or, or they don't have the air ceremony anymore. I forgot how she got to be 
um air though yeah that's um, the other part i wanted to know because i'm not clear how she was air when it was okay that, that the brother had better lineage like yeah that was like the whole thing so i don't understand and it, it's not a matriarchal society so it isn't that no. they have a woman so i don't know why i didn't okay so i'm not just forgetting that part i don't remember that being or i haven't got to it yet okay so my point in bringing that up was just like the way things the the civilizations sort of started to fall was based on people trying to grab power when they could have just worked with somebody else and like understanding that i can't change this i'm just gonna give up <laughs> you know they just they basically gave up at the end of the day because they could have established alliances and you know right right at some wrongs with money or I mean, something but they didn't do the, that at the end of this book it was shahar who gave up all the power from the air and mary um she's the one who's like oh you take all of it i don't care anymore after sia and Decca died so that's when it was really literally made so, out. so hear me out white people aren't gonna change so like, I think that's a theme that we have established outside of this trilogy. Just right, and I think that that's the thing is that like they weren't like as a people, like even with like to real being different and setting up a different way, the people who followed went really right back to doing the same things. Like so, for me, it's just like a here's the thing: it's not going to change. So you know, unless you completely get rid of it unless you completely start the system over. Like that's what it'll take. Most people in power don't wanna like completely restart the system, right? That means they are not gonna be where they are. And I feel like that's the only thing. Go ahead. Because like, even when you lost your power, you weren't like, okay, let me rethink how I'm doing things. It was literally, I'ma keep doing the same stuff. You don't got the same power. It don't make no sense. Yeah. Like, why didn't Hado stick around in <laughs> RMR? Yeah. Like, it seems like his art could have been very similar to similar to Tavril's if. And I think that's better. why, because nobody else was like Tavril, because that's when Sia left. Like in the story, it says like you haven't been here to the palace since mm -hmm. when my great grandfather mm -hmm. Tavril, like when Grandpa Her. Tavril died. Like I think that there was something different about him solely because of how he was raised. That. Because he becomes the head of the clan. Well, now when you have mm -hmm. kids, they're not growing up servants. They're growing up the children, the head of the heir and Mary. So they're going to grow up a little different. So I think like it was great mm -hmm. for him to be there. But you didn't really. goes back to when we talk about like parents like, oh, my I grew up struggling. So my kids ain't going to struggle. Well, you forget that some of that struggle made you who you were. Not that, that your kids need to go through the exact same things, but giving them everything breeds a certain kind of child, right? And I think that that's, like, to me, that's the, mm -hmm. again, because we don't get really from what happens in that time or what's going on in the palace at that time. That's what it makes me think of. It makes me think, like, he had a different mindset, but now you're head of the family. And who you didn't have a wife at the story. So I'm assuming somebody you had kids with probably another incestuous situation because we know y'all and that person probably did grow up how you didn't right in a higher blood society and da 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 so yeah it just mm, it's icky they started out trying to maintain the status quo but then didn't y'all say that that Hado slept with Travril's wife and that was how he was supposed mm -hmm. to and then when he didn't get the reaction that he was looking for that would that's what I guess caused him to give up. But then for Tavril and anybody who saw that, like they had to make sure people knew that he slept with her, otherwise it wouldn't have been effective. And even though it still wasn't, everybody knew that he had slept with the headmaster's wife. So he I'm assuming he was at least some bit a somewhat shamed, if not for his own the outcome of it, but the people probably thought a little bit lesser of him um after having done that because it didn't have the desired effect you know what i'm saying i don't know and so then I my thought it is, would have had a more oh. Oh, go ahead go ahead i was oh, gonna I, say then my thought I, I was, is, what what if to real that's saying i think it's because no <laughs> go ahead Shamla's been muted. <laughs> she can continue. 
Okay, I'm so sorry, Shovel. My bad, my bad, my bad. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I was thinking, <laughs> okay, what I, if Tavril wasn't mad? What if Tavril already thought Hado was a demon and knew that because we don't know if Tavril had children? So, what if that was the only way for them to have an heir? And so, how so Tavril knew because you know, Tavril already knows that demons still exist. Tavril knew that his grandchildren or his children would be demons. Just throwing that out there because Tavril is Tavril is calculating. So what if that's why it didn't have the desired effect that you thought it was because this wasn't really something they were mad about? Just a thought. Sorry, Shomo. Do you want to go now? Okay, please. I unmuted you, so you should be able to do whatever. <laughs> Now our internet's acting up. Shahar's with the clippers outside your house. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I was going to say. Damn. Someone else go on. Time. You the know, internet was, being rude. Did you want to like type it out in the comments and I could just read it out? Yeah, type it. Relatively stable. Or you could, yeah, you could put it in the comments and I could just put it up on the screen. Um, my next question had been, what did you think of Call as a villain? Um, I think I was like less, I was a little bit less captivated by the imagery around him as opposed to who was it from the first previous book Date like Date is like big fight he was like pretty disgusting like that was pretty great um so got show more times too um so but, I I, I I agree with you I think the imagery behind Date was a lot doper um I think the backstory behind Carl was better like because at the end of it like I like Date wanted a tempest to be praised. Really? That was like that. Okay. I don't like that man. So it don't matter to me. Like that was a dumb reason to want to be a villain. I don't know. Uh, but like, hey, your mama and daddy locked you away by yourself and this boy. I don't know. I'm picturing one of Date's black nothing is places is where he's at. I'm not picturing he got like a playground and like a kid's life for forever. So I just feel like his backstory was giving. It was giving. And if I got a short story about what it was like growing, growing up for millennia by yourself, I'm, you know, I'm not mad at reading that. I'm very curious. Also, this made me realize I would love a story from Inafa's point of view. I hope that we get it. Because I don't know what's in the triptych or what the novella is. But now I'm like, these are all people I want to hear from. Because we haven't got anything but info, but like backstory, like other people's point of views and other things. So I just want to see how she thought. It made me curious. Yeah, same. I really liked his backstory. I thought it was very, very interesting how it added so many different layers to so many different characters and their own motivations. Um, I thought the fight was really good, but I, I also really did like that for a majority of the book, he was just this like big mystery. We didn't really know. Whereas Home Dude from the second book, like, I don't know. I guess, yeah, the descriptions were, were definitely more grotesque and like nasty. But he was so up in our faces. Whereas like Call was like visiting Sia's dreams. It was just kind of looming in the background. And then it was like, what's he up to? And then it wasn't until like that last, like the last two parts of the book is when he's much more prominent and like the masks are really kicking. But I really I liked that he was the villain for the third book, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I like oh. that book. sorry. I was just gonna say I haven't really he hasn't been fully fleshed out. I've met him, but I haven't really gotten into the meat and potatoes of his character just yet. And I mean, I think the idea of the mask in and of itself is pretty like it it it. I like the way the stakes have gradually gone and like that's a pretty big <laughs> to make somebody a, a god just by wearing this mask 
Um, I thought that was an appropriate level of, of ramping up the stakes, you know what I'm saying? Because what was it? He he was using the demon blood to, to kill godlings in the first one, which was a, a revelation that demons still existed. And then now we're going to, you know, take inspiration from the gray lady. And now we're going to make a regular person a god now. And oh, it's not quite ready. It's burning people up from the inside, but when it's ready, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna just, you know. And so I thought that was a, I, I really like that. But we'll see how I feel. I'll, I'll jump in the Discord. Let me think. I thought call was interesting. Um, like, I like the tragic aspects of him the most. Like, when Sia, like, realizes that he's had a son this whole time, and he's like, oh, like, I could have been doing things with this guy if I had been able to. And even, like, when he helped him find out his nature in the dream, and, like, knowing that's just, like, gonna be, like, one more thing that's gonna make this, like, worse, like, giving this guy who hates him this new power, and he just kind of does it anyway. Um... So I like those aspects of him a lot. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I'm kind of wondering what his final plan was after he, you know, killed Sia and became a god. Like maybe it's just like part of his affinity as being like vengeance is that he's just so focused on the process that he doesn't think of the after. But I was like, the three only the three work best, you know, when they're all together. And you're gonna forcibly insert yourself into this three with like people who have no reason to like you. Um, especially after you kill their kid. Um, and you're not going to outnumber them because it's going to be them two against you. And so I'm kind of wondering what his end goal was once he made himself a god and got all the vengeance he wanted. But I guess thinking about that would probably be counter to his nature. Um, did did you feel like you, you got a good... You felt satisfied with the dark people not knowing what his ultimate goal was. Did y'all feel satisfied with how that, cause I think it's kind of, I don't know that I can truly trust where I'm at right now that they didn't know that there was a bigger plan at play. They maybe just didn't think it was that big maybe. I don't know if they knew it was that big. I knew they said that they realized that he was using them for something, but I don't know if they realized it was like possibly world ending. Yeah, I don't think they knew that, but also I don't think it would have mattered. Like, he was still a godling, right? Like, I don't think to them, like, I legitimately feel like it would have been like, there's so many of us that could have done this. Why not it be us for Dar, if that makes sense? Like, there's so many, like, you could have went tomorrow with what they did to, you know, what they did to their land and how much they disliked them. And you know how much, like, for, uh, for like, uh, Dar, like, they had so many, like, tra tra traditions that were for Nahadot that where they praised him and they had a temple to him. So, like, to them, like, you know, the Air Mary is very anti to them. So, like, I just feel like that's what happens when you mess with a bunch of people and you, you bully people. Like, I feel like for the for vengeance for humans as well as for the god whose nature was vengeance it was about getting back at people i don't think it was anything more than that it's about like j get j justice for them for what they feel and everything else is just a byproduct of what that happens and i, I that's what i got from both um call and from dar being a part of it because again it makes sense and technically y'all lost y'all leader like y'all lost y'all leader when yana went to the capital and she was a dang good leader like we know that to be a thing so yeah that, that's that was my thoughts adrian said they were so happy to be chosen and so set on revenge that it didn't matter Shumla, can you talk now, or is it still? Yes, <laughs> I'm on my phone now because my laptop is acting up. So, what question are we on? Uh, we had been talking about. Wait, did you get caught off when we're talking about change, or did you get cut off when we're talking about call as a villain? When we're talking about change. Okay. So 
So you could do change and calls the villain to get caught back up. Oh, what was the question? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, just like what you thought about like change throughout this book and like um, why I see it so surprised at everything changing and then what you thought of Call as a villain. Okay, I think I answered the first question before. Um, as a villain, um, when I was like in the middle book, I was like, is he really a necessary part of the story? And then as you go on, you figure out, yeah, he is a necessary part. He's an integral part on why Sia is changing into a god and losing his, his nature, I guess. Um, as a villain, um, I, I feel like it makes sense why he is the way he is. He was left alone in some place with nobody to interact with or talk to since he was born. And, you know, I wouldn't, like, loneliness is very hard. Like, it's very hard mentally and physically, I think. So that also, I think that also, I think someone else mentioned it earlier, how it shaped his nature to be vengeance. Um, so, yeah, I, I think um, what he did was pretty cool. Um, I think he targeted Dar maybe because um, Yeni was Dar before she became the goddess. And um, he was also gathering the other the other countries too to do that. Um, I think he was very strategic about it, but I guess he just got to, well, his end goal was wearing that God mask and becoming a, a God himself. So I guess he did what he, what he set out to do. And I don't know the way he died, it was kind of, it was obvious, but kind of not like, but it wasn't like a big thing. It was like, oh, it's demon blood. So of course he's going to die. But I think um, how uh, Sia accepted being his father and accepted um, like why he is the way he is, I think. And then in turn, he sacrificed himself at the end. I think that was a pretty, pretty good ending. So I think, um, I think Carl played his role um, as what a villain should do. So we kind of touched on this a little bit already, but what did people think of the ending? Um, there was a story, a short story, if you bought the, the standalone uh, version that happens afterwards, but it was not in the omnibus. Um, you can't buy it as an ebook. Well, if you get an ebook of the third book, you can get the story with it. But, um, so we're not going to talk about that, but it exists. <laughs> it's about a Tempest. Um, catching up with Ori after the events of this book and what Glee and A had. Oh, they're in the background. It's mostly about a Tempest and Ori. Okay. Um, but yeah, what the end? The ending, um, I was kind of, I was wrecked. I was like, oh no, she is dead. But then um, as, as you read more in, like, in Shahar's chapter, you see that he's actually pretty happy with Decca in the other realm and he's he's living his best so you know that kind of made me feel better I was like but I feel bad because you know now a tempest Mahados and Yini they've lost their child and they're grieving and it's I think it said that the sun hasn't risen since Sia died so they're in a sort of I guess twilight zone you could say where the sun, you don't see the sun anymore. So it makes me interested to see more beyond what's uh, where we ended. Yeah, no, I hadn't finished it, so yeah, I'll just go. I liked the ending. Um, I, when it was said that like Decca and see you like woke up i was like yay and then it was like we then we went to go get shahar and then i was like why um so i think that was like my only gripe about the ending was like i get that they're supposed to be the new three but it was still kind of like a little bit annoying but i liked that the perspective changed at the end and we saw her processing everything and then the like exchange of power and things like that i thought it was a very good ending and i'm so interested to all these short stories that aren't 
in an easily found manner. <laughs> it just seems so rude <laughs> that all of them are all over the place. But I really, really enjoyed the ending. I thought it was a good ending to a trilogy. I don't... Oh. Shay, you should go. Um, okay, so, and I don't know, because, again, there hasn't, I haven't finished the reread, but I'm really trying to understand how if Shahar and Dakarta are demons, their slashing palms and mixing blood didn't immediately kill Sia. I've been trying to figure that out for the longest. So if anybody has that answer, because that's the only thing that's killing me about the book itself is like outside of maybe being like maybe he started slow dying and that's what it was but even then it doesn't happen to anybody else so it doesn't really make sense and i was gonna not like think about it except for the fact that y'all remind me that that's how call dies and so had call not died with the demon blood i wouldn't have brought it up but like yeah so that that's my beef with it as I'm like going back through because I don't understand why that didn't happen there. I think um, it's it's because um, their demon blood is very diluted. So I think they said it's like one eighth or something. So it's not as concentrated as uh, as glaze but, was. But Ori's would have been way even more diluted because it's been thousands of years since they killed mm -hmm. the demons and no new ones have been made. So it wasn't that like like it had to be that they were like having kids with people that weren't demons like you know what i mean mm -hmm. especially because ori's mom wasn't a demon mm -hmm. that's so that's, that's the other reason i didn't get it is it if the demons don't have power it doesn't affect them or is it just like any demon whatsoever because i know they said they had tested shahar and she didn't have any magical abilities i thought I assume Decca didn't have any abilities either because all of his powers came from those sigils he put on his body. So I didn't know if it was like the blood only killed them if, you know, they were like an active demon, like they had an ability or if it's like just anywhere down the line. But they don't they don't ever say they just say demon blood, like because yeah. they had other demons before Ori. It just her blood was super strong, which we don't even get why her blood was super strong. Yeah, I, just I don't just know if it was her blood or if it was just her abilities were just different. But yeah. like they make it a point Maybe. to be like her blood was a thing and there was a reason why it was specifically her. Because it wasn't, y'all didn't start looking for other demons, which was another thing that I thought was weird. Like y'all just look like she's the only one. Mm, yeah. So that's that's my only thing with the ending. So that's why I think I love the book. It's my favorite <laughs> of the series. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna feel that way again as I end it because I'm already feeling that way where I'm at. But that was like the one continuity thing that I had. And so I don't know, like I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't I didn't know if anybody else knew the reason specifically or if it was specifically stated anywhere. It's not specifically stated anywhere. I, oh, sorry. Uh, so for the end, I don't, I liked that they had the, um, they went off and did their own thing with the trio. I thought it was kind of like another nice parallel with like the last one where like they kind of, Yane is a new god and she like flies off of Nahado and now they're flying off around the world and like ends back and he's a, he's a son again and that was fun. Um. I was like kind of curious about Ahad, but also like I didn't really need like a whole thing for Ahad. Um, it was interesting to watch Shahar just kind of like give up at the end. Like she's like, I don't have anything I care about anymore. Like just do what do with this what you will. Like they're establishing their world's version of the UN. They call it what was it, the Ethernet or something? It's gonna be the governing body. Um, yeah, she's like, I'm just going to kind of hang out with my new husband who I tolerate. Um, and we'll see what happens from here. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel like that was everything. Um, I remember, did anyone feel like the ending came out of nowhere with like the new universe? Like, I remember for me the first time I was like, I could see this being very polarizing. Like, I liked it, but I could also see people being kind of thrown by it. 
I don't know how anybody could be thrown by it because I feel like it was hinted that they were a new three from jump. Like from the like beginning of him meeting and him talking about it. And like, cause I feel like he even mentions three being important in like the very first couple of chapters. So I feel like if you don't like it, it's just cause you don't like it. Not cause you couldn't have seen it coming. Cause like, as soon as I got to it, I was like, that makes total sense. Like I wasn't like, oh, it just was like, of course that's what happened because of like how it went. And that's the only reason I could think of like why he didn't die. Maybe they weren't demons. They were already low key guys. And that's why he didn't die. But again, you still die physically like human. So it's not the same. So yeah, I don't know. But I definitely <laughs> didn't feel like polarized by like it like, it totally made sense for all the hints he dropped about wanting to be the three, about wanting to share the love, about having that love to give throughout the story for me. Yeah, and Yanny even, um, she mentions that, oh, you guys think this is the only universe? There's multiple and multiple and multiple. So it would make sense that they would rule over another universe. And she's like, oh, I wish I could have seen Sia become a god, but that would mean if he was a god in this universe, he would have to be exiled or dead, so she just put him in a different universe. So that makes sense. Yeah, her saying that is why I came through with all the alien theories <laughs> in my notes, is being like, what are these other dimensions? Is, are they going to make more humans? Are we going to get into, like, alien? And I was picturing the movie Alien. <laughs> I started oh, picturing the other worlds when Sia was like, she smells like one of Yanny's new heavens or new worlds. And that's when I was like, okay, so there's other things. And so even more so, I'm like, how many, do we know that this is the only child Sia has knowing Inifa? Because if Yanny could do it, then Inifa was definitely doing it. And by far more, like, it's just so many questions I have about like what she was doing because of this book, if anything. Also, in, in regards to the demon blood that you were asking, Shay, because Ahad is Yanni's first child, maybe it has to do with who's, like, the, whose descendant you are. So, like, if you're Nahado's descendant, Atempus's, Anafa's, or Yanni's, maybe that's why? I don't know. Maybe his his blood isn't as potent as the others? Because Anafa's the original of the three, maybe? I don't know. Right, but I would I would still feel the same about Ori though, because again, it has to be diluted. So like it can't be like as powerful only because Ori is like two thousand years after they've been enslaved. So that's the only that's the part I'm just like, how does it work? And it so it does, and that's the other thing is like for Ori's blood to be as powerful as it is, it means that it doesn't dilute. Like, it's just their blood. And so that's the other part that's like, well, wait, make it make sense. And I'm like, well, maybe it's like, but no, y'all had to touch palms because that's part of what destroyed the underpass. So again, I don't know. I'm with you, Sean. I'm going to throw them out because I'm like, I want to know. But at the same time, I'm like, the math ain't math. Uh, Adrian says, the book, this book itself to me was the most emotional. I guess this is her favorite of the trilogy thus far. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? I totally agree. Most emotional. My <laughs> favorite one. Uh, I think it had the best characters of all three, like, especially because we get Nahadoth in it and like Nahadoth not in slavery. Um, and so we get to see his like parenting abilities and everything like that. Like, I love it. Um, I love that we get to get a better understanding of everybody. Um, I do think I see why it's the thickest book of the three. Like I totally get it. It makes total sense to me. I want to ask y'all, what did y'all think of Sia's individual relationship with each three of them? Yaini, Nahadoth, and Tempest. I think we already talked about Tempest, but Nahadoth and Yaini. I mean, I I thought it was just on brand. Like, I think it's it's like on brand for children to like love like with abandon, to hate with abandon, to like feel things deeply. Like the fact that like they're like their scientific like research and papers and journals all about like 
how children do feel jealous of their parents, like in relationships as children, right? Like you want the affection your daddy gives your mom, you want the affection your mom gives your dad, because it's like a love that you see that you just want. So I don't, it just was perfect. Like, I think like overall, like I loved the character of Sia and how, and there's no way that you could look at him and not see him as a child. Even as he grows up, like he's still that. It's like this thing that is occurring isn't going to change me to my core. And I feel like we got to see that in each of his relationships with each one. And I like I love the in the beginning, we he's like in the crib watching Yana. Like he wasn't ever going to let his mom's soul be anywhere that he wasn't watching over. And he was doing it like constantly, whether people knew or not. And it just. I don't know. It's just, it's awesome to me to think about like how protective of his mother he was and how even after knowing what she did and knowing that it was wrong, like his mother could do no wrong. And for a lot of people, like they think that about their parents, even when they know their parents are wrong, like there's nothing that can change that for them. So for me, it just was all like chef's kiss to the study of childhood and innocence. Like I loved it. I think what that point you brought up, Shay, made me made things click for me in terms of why Tempest loved him so much, um, and like why he was so upset when he died. Like his love is so unconditional, and there are so few people who get it. Um, in terms of his relationship with Nahado, I thought it was interesting. Um, does he ever call Nahado his mother, or is is he kind of like he just uses either? I think he did. Once when he went to go see Nahadoth and Nahadoth looked more like a woman and was like holding him, him. Mm. I think he said mom or mother at that point, but I don't think anywhere else in the book or I could be misremember. Mis I can't remember if he said mom, but I think it spoke to me volumes that Nahadoth loves him so much that he adjusts to what makes Sia feel yeah. better. Like that was that one of the best scenes ever for me um and then there's like a part where he says uh when he's like going to Nimmer and he talks about how he walked into Nahado's room and he could hear him just saying have you come for another sturdy story you greedy child and just like just the love that was there it was just immaculate for me like when you like that part was just a lot and when what you said about uh a tempest is again what we said see it doesn't change so of all of the children even not being his child it makes sense that he would love Sia so much because Sia didn't alter and if that's truly a tempest's nature as we know that's the jury's still out on that like it makes sense that that is what, you know, that's the child that he was super close to, which to me, I'm like, so even more so, how could you be Varane? Like, I just, uh, how could you do that? Just so many more questions. All I'm saying, he's still the true villain. I don't care what y'all think. He just is. I don't know, y'all, because... Y'all throwing a lot of cur lot of curveballs. Y'all got a lot of spin on it now. <laughs> like, uh, you know? Your reaction when you found out about Ahad, Ahad being a great grandpa. <laughs> I just, I'm not ready. Um, and the call, uh, how do you say his name? P or K A H L? How you say it? That man there, I, that revelation, I am mad, actually. The more I think about it, the madder I'm getting, because, Jennifer, why would you do that? Like, your experiment, you're doing too much. It's like the cat dog. That's too much. Y'all doing too much, and I don't appreciate it. It's a child. You knew that he's a child. Why did you do that? Like, the more I'm thinking about it, I need to see how it's unfold, um, unfolding. But the point where I'm at, I think I'm on chapter 17, I think. And so it's, I think it's like three or four. How many more chapters is it? Like four more chapters? I think it's cha 23 chapters in total. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, how you got an hour left with six chapters? I might not. I might not. Okay. I might be further than that. Let me look. I don't mean to lie to you. <laughs> nah. Oh, I got a little bit more than an hour. I got an hour and 45 minutes left. Because when you were saying That's that like there were so many revelations, <laughs> I was like, dang, all those revelations are in the last hour of the book? 
She no, 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 no. killing us. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I got an hour and 45 minutes left. And I got it on. I had to slow it down because I was tripping. And I, I, was, I knew I wasn't going to make it, so I slowed it down. I was like, 1.8, let's try it. And then I was mm-hmm. like missing all the details. <laughs> so I slowed nah, it down. when it's on 1.8, yeah. you look at the TV for five seconds, you'd have missed it. Yeah, like, I was really? out of there. I was doing yeah. good keeping up hybrid reading until that point. And I was like, nah, nah. So, um, so the point where I'm at, if we go to the same percentage in the previous two books, I am still as confused, but there's so much more to, to wrap up. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna go through a lot of emotions here in the next next hour and 45 minutes that I'm not ready for. So there's I'm thinking because of what needs to be wrapped up that this is gonna end up being my favorite just because I know she's gonna handle it well. For me, I loved seeing the relationship between the three of them and Sia because at the end, they come together because they want to save Sia. Like, Nahado puts aside his feelings about and Tempest, and they all three of them try to work together to save Sia and save, the, I guess, the world. Um, just seeing the scenes, bet- the scenes between Yini and Sia and Nahado and Sia and Tempest and Sia just... You can feel the love coming out of the page. And I really loved um, seeing that. And um, yeah, I really loved seeing that. Oh, there's a comment from Free. Uh, ending wrecked me. Also, is uncomfortable with the sex scenes in the heir to the throne. Um, any last comments before we. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. But uh, they did want to come together. But see, his humanity took me through it. Yeah, that was. They were trying everything. Like so many people tried. Like who was it? I thought Yena Nahados tried. Yena had tried, and then even like Decca had tried, and the attempt was to try. It's like four people had tried, and no one could, no one could fix it. Uh, any last comments before we wrap up? So this is the only thing that I've been thinking about, right? So, like, because in my head, like, Enifu should have just killed Call. Like, he should just die, right? But, like, I know that the reason he couldn't know about him is because Sia would have died sooner. Like, that's the number one thing. But I'm like, did you have to keep him alive also so Sia wouldn't die? Like, I just, I just don't understand the logic of it. I'm just, I'm stuck there, y'all. I'm like, why? Why? Because his feel, existence kills him. Mm-hmm. I just don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I, it didn't really feel like Anifa had a real maternal instinct. She was more curious than really caring about her children. So I don't know if she's, maybe you could have a Right, because the truth of the matter is, is we don't know that she was a caring mother. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing in any story that has ever given us that we've assumed it because Sia loved her, mm-hmm. but technically only three of your kids got in this, and that was Sia, Jacarn, and Cool Ray. So I don't know. It's like and we like, see what happened to one of them, right? So when <laughs> we think about it, I'm just like, I have questions. And oh. she is always comparing Anifa to Yaini, how Yaini treats him versus Anifa. And she's, she's like, Yaini's more maternal. She gives me more of the motherly love than Anifa ever did. So I feel like it's just, Anifa was just experimenting and she didn't, she wanted right. to see what was going to happen. I just feel like she was like a kid with a chemistry lab. Like that, that was, that's what, I, when I think of Anifa now, that's what I think of because I don't, I don't get anything else from it. I think it's interesting. Adrian says she never thought of him as a child because I couldn't get it out of my head. But also, Adrian, did you do the audio book or the physical book? Because the audio book is the number one reason why I don't think I ever could put him as an adult. Because that narrator did such a good job making him sound like a kid, no matter what she said. Like it was like a child talking. So I couldn't adult him, even though I knew he was a guy. Like I just couldn't. So that's interesting. Something I forgot was I thought it made me sad how um Sia growing older strained his relationship with Yena. 
like when he started thinking of her as like a potential love interest instead of a, a mom and it kind of like started to wreck things made me sad uh, Adrian said it was a hybrid read it's also interesting that Yanni, her theory is that every godling has a chance to become a god or the metaphor they change into a god eventually so I wonder if that's true or if it's just Maybe Sia or I don't know. My theory is that it's just Sia because he's like consistently been like the strongest person who's not one of the three. So my theory is that it's just Sia and it's just going to be him. But it would be interesting if it was possible for others. My theory would be that it'd have to be people who are like Sia, so completely true to their nature. Which we know most of the godlings like like mm. to be like godlings in the mortal realm. They don't like to just be godlings. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like it will it will only be seated because I don't feel like anybody else lives to that, right? Like, so like, but I do mm. think like Lil has the potential to do it. Like, I think mm. she has the potential to do it, um, which I would love. I would love to see that. Please. Please, like, <laughs> I've had every time her name was mentioned, I'm like, there goes my girl, there, there you go. <laughs> so, so I really was very, I want more Lil. I still like, I've let go of needing to know where the OG, the Carter, what happened to him because I think he, I think he probably died a pretty messed up death. I want to know how long it took him to die. Like, I hope it wasn't like within a week of that whole situation. Like, I want him to have seen shit fall before he before he died but i don't you know i've let that go but still i still want more lil the what way i samina? still want to know what happened to samina <laughs> like i just man can we get a flash fiction on her ending i just feel like she's we probably need. still around she's probably in one of the hells somewhere right yana and i had and dragged her off to one of they like horrendous worlds or something and that we ain't ever gonna i don't i just need it you know, I'm surprised we didn't see Zakarn in this one, seeing as how close and she and Sia were. It's interesting why she wasn't in this book. The only reason I got was like he mentioned wanting to go to Zakarn and being like, but she's too heavy handed. Like she won't, she won't be mm -hmm. quiet about nothing she does. She just gonna do it, and that's why he went to Nimmer. But that's like the only. But like, wouldn't Zakarn be concerned about what's happening with Sia and like? She would check in on him, maybe. I don't know. But I don't think so. Like, I think the only no. reason they were together was because they all stood up against a Tempest. Because I don't okay. think Sia, like, messed with anybody. Like, yeah. I think that, like, as soon as they got free, Sia did his thing. And Jakarn was like, well, I mean, I guess that's Sia doing Sia. Mm -hmm. But he mentioned her. So I feel like there's not love lost between them. But I feel like Sia's nature makes it so that he just wasn't close mm -hmm. to people, right? That, yeah, that's my thought. Yeah, I can see that. I was just curious. I probably should leave this to figure out or to read on my own, but did they react? Did the other two react to the revelation of Sia having a kid? Or did the three react I don't No, I don't think we hear the three's thoughts on him being a, a father. Okay, so maybe it's in one of the short stories in the, in the book. That is a good point because I would like to know how they felt about that big ass lie from Inifa. like because Enifa because mm -hmm. like how do you right. feel about at least for two of them Yanny wasn't around so I could see her not yeah. necessarily having feelings about it but mm -hmm. a Tempest and Nahado definitely gotta have some thoughts right? I feel like Nahado especially would have <laughs> feelings. He did. Yeah, I feel like he would be mad. So I'm just curious. I don't, in the in the short story afterwards, Chloe, if you read it, do you, do they explore that or no? Blink um, twice if they explored it, Chloe. I don't think they did. Damn there's, it. One, there's one with Nahado in the before times, if I remember right. I remember there's one short story about Glee. I don't remember the third short story is though. Interesting. No, I I think you were saying about a short story came with the individual. That, that was about Ori, that, right? That was that was just about Ori and a Tempest, yeah. Oh, okay. so nothing about okay. Yeah, I'm um, also. I guess that secret would have died with Sia. Like, would he have had a chance to tell anybody after he figured it out? I feel like they would know, wouldn't they? I feel like they knew that call was Sia's 
Um, like did like did Call say like oh I'm gonna go kill my dad when he went to like kill him or like did yeah didn't he say like he said to an, a tempest that he was his first target was an Ethel but since you killed her she is my next target but I don't know if, hmm, that's a good question right because in my head I think the only reason I can think that you wouldn't tell them is because they would have killed him and you didn't want him to die mm -hmm. because I can't see you telling. It's telling Nahadoth and Carl living for thousands of years. Yeah, and he was protective of him. Like, didn't that was what broke the the trio, right? When they were it was him, Decca, Shahar were like acting as one, and then Shahar was trying to get Carl, and Decca was like, "No, like we can't do that." That's a good question. So, final before we go out here, favorite of the three. Everybody, y'all know me. Number three, three. <laughs> I think I'm still two. I'm one. I'm one too. Okay, thank you everybody for joining and coming out. Um, we do have sprints next um Saturday. Wait, no. Wait, yeah, next Saturday on Shay's channel at noon Eastern time. Um, and the final discussion is going to be April 9th on my channel at noon Eastern as well. Um, we rescheduled so that people who are um, in the UK and like kind of like the later time zones are going to be able to join us like live for those last two. And I, anyone else have announcements of like stuff going on with their channels? I know Shay has that Edgar Allan Poe. Um, yeah, it won't start till like the weekend after our sprints, but like because it starts the first Tuesday in April. But yeah, we'll have graphics and stuff up and whatnot so y'all can know because I know everybody won't have the same. But if you buy one of the bind ups, I feel like somebody bought one recently. Uh, Alicia bought one and I sent her a picture of my table of contents. Hers was the exact same table of contents. So it went through the exact same forms in the same order. But just in case people can't find that, we're going to have graphics that have like each poem that we're reading, each story. So you guys will know. So if you want to follow along, you can. So stay on the lookout for that. Anything else? Next installment of the Sookie Stackhouse. You know? I was hoping nobody would bring it up. Thank you, Tempest. I appreciate you. Um, we are on book four. I don't remember the name of it. I think it's Dead to the World, maybe. Um, we just finished book three yesterday. And it was actually the best of the three that we've read so far. So the, the racism was low. It wasn't non existent, but it was low. So there's that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's happening. And we're going to look at the best of face. the three books <laughs> is the one with the lowest racism. I love it. Listen, I love it. That was hilarious. It was there. But <laughs> anyway, so. We're hoping for like we've gotten down to pretty low. Maybe we can get to zero in the fourth book. Let us let us pray. Yeah, I, I feel think like it's uh, like we got uh, UK level racism in book three, not America level racism. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Deidre's also doing the Dragon Republic discussion yeah. tomorrow. Oh yeah, I got that. Yeah, I do have that. Yeah, and I actually did finish that one, but I had an audio book. And I think that was on Erica's channel, The Broken Spine. At, I don't know the time. Just check out her channel. I don't really have any announcements. Um, yeah, I stream on Twitch. <laughs> also, I do that every Monday, Wednesday, yeah, and Friday. cooking stream was awesome. Oh, thank you. It was awesome. yeah. yeah, I did a cooking stream where I made stuffed bell peppers, and that's going to be like a sort of ish regular thing. And it'll always be at my mom's house because her Wi Fi in the kitchen works, whereas my place it does not. So my mom will be a guest star on all of the streams. <laughs> and then at some point, I will have a video up talking about more books that I've read for the memory project that I'm doing on my uh, booktube channel where I read books having to do with memory and then I discuss and reflect. <laughs> this this has to do with the memory project. 
It this does. <laughs> it's this keeps happening. I keep getting to the middle of a book and being like, "Oh gosh, this is attitude. the way I keep sending her stuff." Every time somebody posts a book and they say something about memory, I'd be like, "Here you go, memory." Here you go. I feel like I'd like added at least five books to her TBR. Oh, life. the list is long now. I love it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Have you, you gotten to the memory one. police yet? Yes, I. That's the the book that gave me the idea. Actually, okay, it was the memory police. It's so okay. good. Okay, I'm. I have been. I've had it on my shelf for like two years, so I'm. Oh, you gotta read it. You gotta. I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. I, the premise just sounded really awful. I haven't made like a specific video about it, but that was when I was like, hmm, this could be a good idea. <laughs> so I think that was all the announcements, right? Okay. Well, thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you to my wonderful co-hosts. Uh, question for you, Emma Ray. Trying to buy your hair oil, but can't. Do you live in the UK? Right now, I can only ship in the US. So that could be why. So if you're going on like the website and trying to order, it'll stop you once you've put in your, your address if it's not the United States address. Super sorry. At some point, I'll have that open and I can ship out all over the world, but I just don't have that capability right now. Sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you to my wonderful co-hosts and yeah, have a good night, everybody. Take care. See you at the next sprint. Goodbye.